A happy birthday to the English bard, whose special day we celebrate this week. The one and only Shakespeare is our ward. His era of the English here we seek. But was there more to tutor England here than operas from our dear departed scribe? Or was there more to give us cause to cheer? So join me as I try and to describe a time of such great change for England's land as kings and God competed for a throne. When war and peace did seem to walk in hand and pestilence knocked noble English prone. Without much fanfare, let us now begin our lesson on the Tudors here within. Our era of the Tudors launched with death, as poor King Richard died in civil war. From there came with anticipated breath, the seventh English Henry took the floor. But turns out violent coups are not so wise, and Henry's unfair taxes made for worse. So when the eighth of Henry's took the guise, he pushed the former's taxers to a hearse. The eighth of Henry's rule brought England fame, for he's the king we think of in our mind when thinking of the Tudors and their game, and thinking of their long departed time. So let us take a look at Henry VIII, along with his bold actions and their fate. The eighth of Henry's was in need of sons, and blamed his woes on issues with his wife. But as it turns, the women aren't the ones who spread both X and Y to spark a life. So Henry had a cause to get divorce, but papists weren't so keen on such an act. So Henry stopped the issue at the source by forming a new Anglo church with tact. As this new church would give a man the right to separate from wives he deemed were ill, but Henry birthed a quite aggressive fight in holy wars that caused expensive bills. In turn, the king had failed to birth an heir, but daughters were instead what he did bear. Along with changing England's holy faith, the eighth of Henry's raised a massive fleet. So when it came that he became a wraith, he left behind a navy hard to beat. The sixth of Edwards briefly took the throne, but turns out in-laws aren't the greatest fit. So then came Lady Jane, who briefly shown that one of Henry's daughters ought to sit. There first came Catholic Mary to the chair, who earned allegiance from the Papist Scot. But then came Lizzie, with her ginger hair, who exiled Catholic Mary with her lot. Elizabeth would be the famous queen, who saw the Tudor line in England weed. Because the reaper of the former time had brought such rapid death and dying there, the Tudor English had a troubled uphill climb to find a way to finance their repair. The population rose in 80 years, from 2K to a million times four, which gave the English cause to bust out shears and make a woolen fortune theirs to chore. This came with former era's merchant's fleet, which gave advantage to the English trade, and made dear London's harbor hard to beat, with future fortunes seem to have been made. It turns out when a population booms that may in short term give a pleasant plus, instead in long term there a danger looms and causes inequality to fuss. In competition with the Spanish Sea and Portuguese who sailed across the globe, the future English fortunes weren't to be, and income inequality was drove. Between the silver and exotic spice and gold from unimaginable lands, the poor and wealthy English seemed to splice, and English fortunes seemed to turn to sands. 
There ended Tudor English in a hole, the way it started under Yorkish rule. I hope you all enjoyed this special week in honor of the greatest English bard whose rhyme scheme in this video I seek, but turns out really isn't all that hard. So thanks for watching Shakespeare's special bid. It certainly was fun to make this set. I've been a fan of his since twas a kid. And no, I didn't make this on a bet. Be sure to go and hit the button like, and if you like to anthropology, subscribe to make my sub count quickly hike, but if you don't, no need for apology. A favorite play of Willie's, if you please, describe it in the comments at your ease.